I really fucked up G Unit clothing, the record company, the mm. whole shit. I put G Unit in flames. Mm. And uh Damn. I put him like where I put Marquise. In the early two thousands, G Unit had one of the best runs a rap group could ever hope for. They had a debut album that became an instant classic and sold over 300k copies in its first week. And all the solo albums dropped by each member all did well on the charts. Initially, G-Unit was meant to have only three members, 50 Cent, Tony Yayo, and Lloyd Banks. The trio were all friends that grew up together on the streets of South Jamaica. Banks, Yayo, and 50 already started calling themselves G-Unit even before they got a record deal. 50 was the first among the three that got signed. And after he signed with Shady Records, Fiddy decided to start his own label. He created G-Unit Records and the first artists he signed were his homies, Tony Yayo and Lloyd Banks. But just before G-Unit could release their first album in 2003, Tony Yayo was put behind bars. He was arrested for first degree possession of a loaded firearm by a convicted felon. Therefore, a spot was open on G-Unit and Fiddy decided to sign a rapper from Nashville. He signed a rapper with the Southern drawl, mixed with the hardcore East Coast vibe, Young Buck. Buck started rapping at quite an early age. By the age of 12, he was already spitting bars, and he signed his first record label at the age of 16, when he signed for Birdman's Cash Money Records. But because he signed a deal at a young age doesn't mean he had it easy. Just like Fiddy was dropped by Columbia Records, Buck didn't succeed at Cash Money either. His career stalled and he never released any project under the label. And in the year 2000, Young Buck left Cash Money and signed with Juvenile Records. Under this label, he was able to release his debut album, Born to Be a Thug. However, the album failed to generate any buzz and Buck's career was still struggling. But lucky for him, a spot opened up on G Unit. Young Buck was signed and he did a pretty good job of replacing Tony Yayo. G Unit released the classic Beg for Mercy, and Buck had finally had his breakthrough. After the success of Beg For Mercy, the G-Unit members started dropping solo projects. Lloyd Banks released his album Hunger For More. This album was a massive success. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart and sold 433 copies in its first week. And less than two months after Banks' album was released, Young Buck released his first album under G-Unit. Straight Outta Cashville was released on the 24th of August 2004. Buck's album received positive reviews from many critics. One critic even called it the best G-Unit release at the time. Buck's album debuted at number 3 on the Billboard 200 and sold 261 copies in its first week. The album has since been certified double platinum, and this was proof that Young Buck could indeed hold down an album on his own. G-Unit was truly on a roll this period. They were one of the most dominant rap groups in the industry, and whatever they released became chart-topping hits. Being affiliated with Eminem and Dr. Dre was also an added bonus for the group. And at the Vibe Awards in 2004, Young Buck showed just how loyal he was to Dre. Dr. Dre was built to perform at the show, and just when he was about to get on stage, a man named Jimmy James Johnson asked Dre for an autograph. Dre declined because he was about to perform, but Jimmy didn't take this rejection lightly. He punched Dre in the back of the head and the whole scene devolved into chaos. There were several uniformed policemen at the show, and even they struggled to break up the fight. When Young Buck arrived at the scene, he stabbed the fan in the chest with a knife. Buck was arrested and sentenced to jail. However, luckily for Buck, the matter was settled out of the court, and he didn't spend any time in prison. But during this period, G-Unit's time as a rap group was almost over. 50 Cent had an issue with the game who joined the group shortly before they released their debut album. He stated that the game wasn't consistent with his actions. 50 Cent also claimed that he helped the game write some of the songs on the documentary album. However, the game never acknowledged or gave 50 any credit for his work on the album. Instead, he says that all 50 wrote was what you heard 50 say on the record. A few months later, 50 Cent kicked the game out of G-Unit while on air. While doing a radio interview on Hot 97, 50 simply stated that he's gone and then told the game to stop saying G-Unit. After the game left G-Unit, 50 started having issues with Young Buck. Fiddy stated that Young Buck aired private matters publicly. He missed recording sessions and he also had a drug abuse problem. Buck started appearing less and less on G-Unit songs, and when G-Unit showcased their songs on MTV, 
Young Buck wasn't part of this showcase either. So in April 2008, Fiddy used a Hot 97 interview to announce that Young Buck was no longer part of G-Unit. And Buck did not agree with this decision. He released a diss track about Fiddy Scent and other members of G-Unit. But Fiddy didn't reply with his own diss track or any troll videos online. Instead, all he did was record a phone call. So here it is outside of what I owe you. You got tax times rolling around. This is what this I'm literally, I, you know, in my taxes. I still owe money from last year's tax. So, you know, I understand you want your money and pushing for my book, pulling and meeting your money that which I owe you. But it's so many other debts that I'm in for us, the taxes from last year. And then this year is about to roll around. Bitch. Well, if you didn't notice, what you just heard is Young Buck crying on a call begging 50 Cent to let him remain a member of G-Unit. Buck replied to the recording by releasing another diss track. Tape conversation. Streets want to know. What Young Buck gonna do? How, how Young Buck gonna respond? 50 Cent then revealed that Young Buck still owed G-Unit two albums. And that's not even the end of it. 50 Cent then filed a charge against Young Buck, stating that the rapper owed him $250,000. Buck replied that he didn't owe 50 Cent any money. However, after some time, 50 was proven right. Young Buck stated that 50 Cent forced him to file for bankruptcy to ensure that he didn't have to pay the 250 grand. Young Buck stated that 50 Cent also filed a cease and desist letter against him, which stopped him from releasing any music. After some time, Young Buck and another of 50's old enemies, The Game, planned to drop a mixtape titled Worth More Than 50 Cents. Sound familiar? Unfortunately, The Game and Young Buck's album never saw the light of day. Hey guys, thank you for watching. Let us know what you think about 50 Cent down in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.